Welcome to the Highly Sensitive Person Podcast, a twice monthly podcast for people who experience the world intensely. Join me on a journey of acceptance of our highly sensitive person traits. Welcome to episode 56. I'm your host, Kelly. This is a show for people who have sensory processing sensitivity. I share stories, reflections, and personal experiences about the benefits and struggles of being highly sensitive from my perspective. A long, long time ago, I wrote posts and did corresponding podcasts about the best jobs for HSPs. I also talked about what I thought was the number one single best job for HSPs, and that, in my opinion, was working for yourself from home or working from wherever you want. But since that time, my thoughts and experience on the subject of the best jobs for highly sensitives has changed, and I didn't think it was right not to address the fact that I don't completely agree with what I said way back then. The answer to what is the best job for HSPs isn't a list of specific jobs, and it isn't necessarily working for yourself. The answer is that it depends. I know this isn't a nice and tidy answer. It isn't what people want to hear, but I think it's more accurate than what I advised before. The best career for an HSP depends. Okay, first I want to address why working for oneself isn't necessarily the ideal for everyone. Remember, that's what I originally said I thought was the number one best job for HSPs. Working for yourself means you can control your environment the temperature, the lighting, the ergonomics, the hours you work, and of course, the work itself. It seems logical that that would be great for an HSP. And in her documentary movie, Sensitive, Dr. Elaine Aaron said that there's a risk to working for yourself, but also a freedom. You can craft a career that fits you to a T. I still think working for yourself is a great option, but it has real challenges too. Leaving office life and working from home isn't this magical cure that makes everything in your life better. So here's a short little list of some possible downsides to working for yourself. For one thing, freelance work is unpredictable. You're always hunting for sources of income, and that can be tiring and give you anxiety. It can be hard on an HSP who craves stability and calm. You might feel kind of lonely due to a lack of social interaction. You might feel challenged by time management. It's kind of tough not to get distracted and to procrastinate, and then later you feel guilty about not being productive. And lastly, work's never over. When you work from home, you don't have to get your work done between 8 and 5 p.m. or whatever, because there's no clocking out. You might find yourself not stopping working, which isn't good for you and your peace of mind. So in summary, working from home for yourself might be a great arrangement for some HSPs, but not for others. It depends. I wrote a more in-depth blog post about these challenges of working from home. If you want to read more about that, you can find it in the show notes at highlysensitiveperson.net slash episode 56. A long time ago, I created a list of jobs that I thought would be good for HSPs. But as time went on, people left comment after comment on my blog disagreeing with many of the jobs on this list. And then someone else would come along and disagree again and say that they liked the job. For example, I originally had listed human resources as a potential good job for HSPs because it seemed like you'd get to make positive changes in the workplace and help people with their careers and our intuition and detail-orientedness might make us great at hiring quality employees. But then someone left a comment that disagreed and said, I want to comment on the human resources specialist career. I was 